Hello, my little juniors. I am so sorry I can't be with you today, but I got to go to Arizona and check out these other schools. So hopefully your videos coming up this week will be a little more entertaining. Where we left off yesterday was how to write our learning goals. We know that there's four parts. Hurry up, hope, I know you love this. What is the hand signal for a STEM? Touch your hands together, hope, touch them. Good. All right, Seth, what is a verb? Did he clap? I hope he clapped. He better have clapped. Okay, Kaylee, how about quantity? Did you hit the table? Thank you, Miss Kaylee. And finally, Claudia, what is the one for specific or sparkle? Did you touch it? Did you hit it? Did you wave your hands in the air like you just don't care? Yes, so we know that these are the four parts. If you don't have all four in your goal, then you know that it's not properly written. So the last step is to label them according to our Bloom's taxonomy. Remember Bloom said there's three ways that they actually learn the best. Your brain, which is cognitive, right? Your body, which is psychomotor, and then your heart, which is effective. So every time you write a learning goal, you have to label which one they hit, at what level they hit it at. So this blue piece of paper, you're gonna need. This handout with our notes on it, you're gonna need. If you're on page five, the very bottom of page five, they will show you how to label your domains. So when you're looking at them, okay, after you write out your sentence, there's a parentheses. And in that parentheses, let me show you. Okay. You will see a C-A, a P-C-O-R, and an A-V. That means at the cognitive level, they hit analysis. At the psychomotor level, they hit complex overt response. And at the affective level, they hit valuing. And right now you're saying, Ms. L, I don't know what that all means. Well, what that means is when a principal walks in and they say, why are you teaching this? You can say, it hits this level of their brain, it's moving their body in this direction, and it's touching their heart in this direction. And by hitting all three Bloom's domains, I am teaching the total learner. Now we might use, right, we might, might, might use the multiple intelligences in order to reach those levels because the multiple intelligences are a tool. So when we're looking at that, it's very important to know the difference between the two. Which one is multiple intelligences and which one is actually your Bloom's taxonomy. So if I can hit all three, it turns from an objective to a goal. So what we have to do is learn those three today together, but we're only gonna take them one at a time because it's too much. It's just too much, my friends. So the very first one, what a cognitive domain. If you are in the cognitive domain, you should know some things that happen. First, as I'm looking at the top, and it starts with knowledge, this is actually the simplest or the lowest level type of learning. So as you travel down the chart, the learning becomes more complex or more difficult. So you wanna be at the highest level learning possible. Like we do not wanna just use basic things. This is where you're gonna find most of your verbs. So if you look at the right hand side of your chart where it says example, keywords, and verbs, when you hear something that says defines, describes, that is the lowest possible level of thinking because it doesn't take a lot of knowledge or a lot of applications for them to do that. I just realized how close you were. So. When you are doing that, you have to get to the most complex level. So on the right hand side, you'll see lots of verbs and lots of descriptions for them. So the very first thing you should know about every chart is as you travel from the top of the page to the bottom of the page, the learning becomes more complex and more higher level or deeper thinking. We know the cognitive is all about the, Emily, what is this? Not my forehead, it's my brain, good. So let's start with knowledge. Knowledge is basic recall. That means you've got to have some facts, you got to know names, some dates, and some places. So when you were talking yesterday about listing the United States, that was just straight out memorization. So that's low level recall. If you're always at the knowledge level every single day of the week, then your kids are gonna be so bored in your class. <gasps> so we've got to get to higher level. Comprehension. This one is so hard to measure. Put a little star next to it. Star it. When you star that, it's really hard to measure because how do I know by looking at you or watching you that you can comprehend? So anytime that you use that verb comprehend, you should do something different. That is a big no, no. 
okay? You need to choose something different because I can't physically tell if you're comprehending. If I'm talking to you or having you recite or having you draw, that's a better measure of whether or not you really understood what I have. So sometimes to comprehend, you might have to have knowledge or how something works in order for you to understand it. But it's very hard to measure. Application, oh, this is the best. Application is when you take one idea and you use it in a new process where you can apply what you've learned. So a lot of times, if you've been talking about cooking and you actually go make a cake, you're applying your baking knowledge to making that cake. Or right now with you, you learn some reading skills, so you're applying it to your reading techniques when you read the book, and that's how we're measuring you. So for you, application is the actual doing of it. Analysis. <sighs> such a big word. Analysis is when you can break things down into pieces. You can break it apart to look at it or to examine it. So when you in, you analyze something, you start to look at why does this work? How does it work? How long is it going to take me? What am I going to do? So you've got to have some knowledge. You've got to understand that knowledge. You've probably got to play it around with it a little bit in order to hit analysis. So analysis is a higher level of thinking. Sometimes you might hit it all in one lesson. Sometimes you might hit analysis on Wednesday or Thursday. Maybe Monday or Tuesday they're reading the book, they're learning about certain concepts about time or people or settings, and then analysis could be your discussion where you guys are debating or breaking it down to see what kids know. Look at synthesis. Once you break something down, you gotta bring it back together. Bring it back. You synthesize. Can you, by breaking it down and figuring out what is a good thing and what might not fit, can you bring it back together and make it work? So synthesis, notice that, builds a structure, puts it together with emphasis of new meaning. What did you learn after you analyzed that text? How can you apply it to your own life? That is a very high level thinking. So notice the verbs on there, categorizes, combines, reorganizes, revises. Those are heavy duty verbs, okay? The last one is evaluation. Can you evaluate something? Can you look at it and know if it's right or wrong? Which is what you guys are doing in your reading books. You guys have learned some basic knowledge about how to read. You can understand because I've watched you practice. I've watched you apply what you've learned. Now you critiqued each other and said, hey, you might be doing this right or you might not be doing that wrong. You compared it in the rubric of your head. You gave oral discussion about it, which was synthesis and now it's evaluation. You said to your partner, your hand wasn't right. You didn't ask enough questions. So sometimes you can go from knowledge to evaluation in 15 minutes. Sometimes it takes a few days. So when you're looking at evaluation of ideas or materials, you are actually looking at the highest level of thinking. Do they know if it's wrong or right? So when you read your goal in that parentheses, you're gonna put C for cognitive domain, dash, and then whatever level of the cognitive domain that you hit. Now this is the tricky part. How do you know which level you hit? What I do is I walk my th way through the chart. I'll say, okay, are they applying the knowledge? Yes, today they are writing their own learning goals and then they're gonna work with a partner. Well, that means together they're gonna analyze it. Then they're gonna figure out if it's right or wrong, what parts work, what was missing, that's synthesis. And then they're gonna go back and tell their partner, that they need to fix this, that they need to fix their quantity or they need to fix their specific. So they're evaluating. You always, always mark the highest level. Because if you make it to the bottom of evaluation, you've had to march through the other steps to get there. So I would mark C-E, okay? So then if I was saying, hmm, like today, you guys are doing in lab, you're putting up some cricket. Kids have learned about cricket, They've shown me that they know it because they've actually cut out letters. Now we're gonna see if they can actually do it, which is synthesis. But they're not gonna tell me if it's right or wrong, so I'm not moving to evaluation. But they are gonna be able to tell me how to make those materials or separate them or differentiate or discriminate which letters go with what words. So they're gonna be at synthesis. If you can answer yes as you march your way down the chart, that means you go to the next level of thinking. When you answer no, it means that you completed the level before it. So if I said no on synthesis, what part should I label? What part should I label on my learning goal? Sophie, you. Did she say analysis? 
because analysis would have been the last part I said yes to. So remember, as long as you're saying yes, you march on down there and you get to higher level thinking. The moment you say no, it means you completed the step before you, and that's the one you should label, okay? So cognitive, things to remember, right? As you travel down the chart, the thinking increases. You must go through every single step in order to make it to the next one. You can't skip or jump. So as soon as you say yes, 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 you keep marching down the chart. The moment you say no, I'm not doing that, you look back at the one you just completed before it and that's your highest level of thinking. So what I want you to do now is the substitute's gonna pick out of our name jars and you're gonna pair up with that person to evaluate, does my learning goal match my state standard? And what level of cognitive? Now listen to me clearly. You have got to know every single one of these in order. So if I were you tonight, I would memorize the order of my cognitive domain and start looking at that. Because tomorrow you're learning affective. The next day you're learning what? Um, oop, tomorrow, I'm sorry, bodily kinesthetic. The next day you are learning affective. So you're going to have to know all three domains when I get back. All three domains. All right, partner up. Take 15 minutes to evaluate and to help your partner write the best learning goal and to put it in the right cognitive position. All right, I miss you and I'll see you soon. Bye.